I'm not much of a speaker, so you're in for a treat tonight. <laughs> like Corey said, I was drafted September of 68. The way I got drafted, I was up in Michigan uh, cooking on this island. Mom calls me and says, Dave, you've got something here from Selective Service. You better get down here. You've got to be down to on Monday morning at 7 o'clock. Okay, I had to tell the boss that I had to leave. But he wasn't too happy about me leaving because I just had started up there. So I get down, down here at the federal building, drove my car, parked it on the street. Parked on the street and didn't cost you nothing. So I'm parked on the street and I go into this federal building. In this room, there's over 200 guys in this room. And it's not like going to high school or anything like that. These guys, I don't know hardly nobody from the classroom. So, this sergeant's up there, the colonel says, all right, at this time, anybody who signed up for the service, please stand up. A bunch of them stood up and they went out the door. He said, at this time, does anybody want to volunteer to go in the service, stand up? A couple guys got up. Now there's about 70 of us still sitting there. So now he says, well, well when you go out this door here, he said, I'm gonna tap you on the shoulder. Okay, that means we're leaving. No, you're not leaving. So he, he, he was going out the door, he says, Army, Army, Marine, Army, Army, Marine. The Army guys went that way, the Marines went that way. So now we're going to this room, now we've got to take these tests to qualify. I said, well, I'll, I'll max this cooking test because I went to cook school in high school, so I said, I ain't going to have no problem. So after all, everything's done, we went down to Shiloh Toes, had a little token, got our lunch, came back. Well, you qualify as a mechanic. I said, what? A mechanic? I said, the only thing I've ever done was put gasoline in a car. That, that's the, the mechanic I am. So they, they sent me to Fort Dix, New Jersey. I'm over the greater Cincinnati airport. Never have been on an airplane. I don't know if anybody else has ever been on a plane, but this is my first experience. So we had to walk out to the tarmac and get up into the plane, TWA. So we get up in that, and all of a sudden the plane takes off. We're up thousands of... See, all of a sudden my ears start popping. I start crying. I said, I, 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 I think I'm falling apart here. The stewardess comes and said, that got you chewing gum. So I started that and all of a sudden the ear popping went away. So then we landed in uh, Philadelphia. Big green bus comes over there, picks us up, takes us over to Fort Dix, New Jersey. Then you have your zero week where they give you all your shots and that, that was a trip too. The, the, the mayor guns they shoot, shoot you with. So they've got pictures of me. I, I'm, I wasn't a happy camper back then. So then we had to get our hair cuts, and all of a sudden we got all of our gear. We went over there. Then uh, they said, after that we went to, uh, a lot of guys left. They went to their schools, so I was stationed right there at Fort Dix to, to do my wheel vehicle. I'd done such a good job. I mean, I was getting 60s on these tests. I, I, I was a mechanic now. I've done such a good job, they're gonna make me a track mechanic, a better mechanic now to work on bigger things. So I went down to Fort Benning, Georgia, and I was down there. The class before us, they went to Germany. Our class was going to Vietnam. Well, there was about, uh, I'd say 35 of us guys in this class, and they were, uh, we had to go two weeks of this RVN training, at Republic of Vietnam training, to, to teach us how to to get along in Vietnam. So this first sergeant, he goes, all right, I'm not wasting my time. If you don't want to be here, going up to the beer hall. He says, I'm not wasting my time teaching you people who don't want to learn. Don't you know, about 15 of them guys got up and went up to the beer hall. I stood there and I listened to every word he had to say. And uh, he was showing me about the gun and all that. I said, okay, I'm ready. So now I, I leave Cincinnati to to Seattle, Washington. Get up there, they take all my clothes off. I'm stripped. So now I'm walking through this aisle there and they're putting all these green clothes on me and jungle fatigues. And then they give us a whole new wardrobe. So then uh, I've got jungle fatigues on, now we're going to Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I mean, it's snowed and it's high. Where they, uh, so we was only there, but I think I, they were just dropping off the mail. So we were there for a minute. Then we landed in Hawaii. I said, I've never seen none of these states. I get to see my first. 
And now we're in for the treat. We had these nice looking stewardesses and all that, you know, our band is going to be great. We landed in Guam. Guess what? Get off the plane, get on this other plane, this continental plane. We get on it. We've got these retired stewardesses on there now. <laughs> <laughs> so we, 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 we took off Guam, then we landed in Cameron Bay. And I'm telling you, uh, it's just like if you've ever got off a plane in Florida or something, that, that heat hit you all of a sudden. Some of these guys are passing out just getting off the plane. And it, there was no air conditioning in the, the billets they had there. It was just a uh, replacement center. So you had to wait around there to get your orders. So I'm waiting around. Then all of a sudden I come down with, on orders. 10 o'clock at night, I come down on orders for Play Coup, Central Highlands. So now I'm out there on this C-131 with these other guys. I'm, uh, all of a sudden the plane takes off. We're landing. All, there's no lights on this plane. I don't even see no landing gear or nothing going down or anything. I said, oh my. So we, he lands a plane. Now, now we get off the plane. We don't know where to go. All of a sudden this little truck comes by, picks us up, takes us over to the camp. I was assigned to the 1st and 92nd Field Artillery. Didn't know anything about artillery. All of a sudden these guns start going off. I said, oh Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm not coming home now. I didn't know where I was at. And the guy said, don't worry. When you hear that whistle coming in, he said, that's when you worry. He said, it's our guns going out. So I was there maybe a week. And I told my company battery commander, I said, you know, I said, I'm no mechanic. I said, I'm, I'd be afraid to work on some of these vehicles. And you'd be in it and going down one of these hills or whatever and have a wreck. I said, I'm a cook. He said, oh, you're a cook? I said, yes, sir. So he sent me down to the mess hall. I was there two weeks. I was learning on how to, uh, these fire units they had. Then I went up to this fire base. And then um, I was up there for about four months. I was the only cook on there. This colonel comes up there and he says, uh, who's in charge? I said, I looked around and said, I guess I am. He said, no, sir. He said, it don't work that way. He says, he got on the horn. That night they had an E7, two E6s, four spec fives up there. And they said, what did you tell that colonel? I said, I told him, told him the truth. He asked me who was in charge. I told him I was. <laughs> <laughs> so I got promoted from PFC to spec four. <laughs> and he asked me the last time I took a shower. And I said, there's no water up here. The only thing, we got this water buffalo here. And I got to use it to cook with. So he said, nope. So I got on the next helicopter. We went back to base camp. And I got me a shower, a hot shower too. And uh, I stayed around there, and then I went into, uh, I went back to my base, and uh, we started getting, getting incoming and stuff, and uh, one of our guns got a direct hit, and this one uh, medic, he says, Callahan, you've been hit. I'm looking, no, I ain't been hit. He said, no, you've been hit. I looked on my right leg, and all of a sudden, it was just oozing down. And uh, it, I, I went into panic then. I, if he hadn't said anything, I'd have been all right, but he had to say something. <laughs> it's, it's my blood, you know, that's, that's what. So the, the medic shot me up with morphine. And then uh, after that, that night, uh, I was met back down, down to play coup down to Fourth Infantry uh, Hospital. And that was a treat. I'm sitting there and these other guys, I mean, they were, way worse shape than I was. So then they finally came around and all of a sudden that morphine started, you know, easing off now. So the doctor, he was gonna come in there and he was gonna amputate my leg, make it quick and easy for him. And I said, no, no doc, I said, I said, I got movement in my foot. And I was praying to God, I said, please move. <laughs> Toes started moving. <laughs> so I prayed to God, I said, thank you. So then uh, they, they cleaned the wound out and then uh, they had to leave it open. When you've got a, a wound like that, they got to leave it open to let the muscle uh, shrink back. So then uh, I left Vietnam in uh, 70. I went over there in 69. I came back in 70. I'm saying that. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was in March. So I, I came back into Seattle, Washington, took all my clothes off again. <laughs> then they gave me all brand new clothes. I'm walking through the thing here. And then uh, this one 
Lieutenant says, you got to have this steak dinner. I said, I don't want a steak dinner. I want to have my steak dinner in Cincinnati. He said, nope, you got to have your steak dinner. So I went there, got the steak dinner, threw it in the garbage. I said, yeah, I had your steak dinner, and I'm ready to go home. <laughs> so then they took us over to the airport. So now I'm flying into Chicago. We got to we got to uh, fly into Chicago, so I'm flying around Chicago for two hours taxiing for this airplane to land. So he finally lands, and like I say, back then they don't they they, they didn't come up to the terminal. You had to land out there and had to get off the plane and then walk across the tarmac to uh, to go in there. So now we had to change planes because this guy's out of gas. So on the way up up to this uh, terminal there, the guy spit on me. My whole outlook in life changed. I said, America turned on me. And uh, this World War II veteran, he comes up to me, goes, stay with me, Sonny, wipe, wipe all this stuff off my uniform. So now I'm scared, because there, there, there's a whole lot of people back here that didn't like Vietnam veterans. So now I'm following this guy. So when, once we landed in Cincinnati, I got off the plane. I'm right behind him. I'm following him all the way into the thing. My mom and dad were there. And I wanted to get out of the airport as quick as I could. So then it wasn't up to uh, 24 years ago, I didn't say nothing about Vietnam. None of my kids, none of them knew anything what I did. My granddaughter asked me, says, Papa, we're having a Patriots Day at school. I want you to come. I said, Papa, don't do that kind of stuff, huh? Well, if you got granddaughters, they give me them big old cow eyes. You, you go break down and go. So, so I said, okay. So I went to, went to the uh, school there, and that helped me. And this right here is helping me. With all you people, this is helping me, and I thank you.